a man who roots for the Arkansas Razorbacks like very few else, John Daly here in the Rich Eisen Show studio. Good to see you, John. No, it's great to be here. Good to have you here. Yeah. Well, because, you know, you were on Thursday's show, promote the 30 for 30 that premiered on November 1st, and you were playing golf in Del Mar with your buddies. I just couldn't, I couldn't, con you know, I don't want to continue on a conversation with a guy who's playing golf. And I said, come in Monday. It wouldn't have distracted me at all. Yeah, you don't think <laughs> no, it wouldn't have hurt me at all. <laughs> <laughs> and so you said, I'll come in Monday. And look yeah. who's here. Look who's yeah. just, good to see you here, man. I'll go anywhere for a free haircut. Did, now, you did get a haircut from Rob Lowe's guy? I did, back there? yeah. yeah. You look good, i got to be honest with Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. I'm just describing it for the radio audience right now. <laughs> you tightened it up. Did you, you went to the Rams game yesterday? I did, yeah. What would you think? I thought the Rams played an unbelievable defensive game. Just a shame they couldn't put some more points on the board for them. And they chanted for Jared Goff there yesterday. Yeah. Now, well, you know Jeff Fisher, right? You I know, know Coach for a long time, yeah, when he was at Tennessee. That's where you first met him, when he was with the... Titans, yeah. Wow. A good guy. He good, is a good, good dude. Too. Well, it just everyone's wondering why isn't he putting Jared Goff in the game? You know, I mean, well, I mean, he's you know he's he's won a lot of football games and um, he's a good coach and you know if a coach and the coaching staff believes that Keenan's the one that's going to win that game for him, then right. you know you just gotta you gotta believe in he that. Damn, almost did. And you're a Cowboy go guy though, right, John? Oh yeah. Okay, that was a good win for us yesterday. Well, I mean, it just Dak Prescott just keeps winning, and obviously you know him from the SEC days as well, having watched him. At Mississippi State. Now, I assume you also know Romo, too. Yeah, right? me and Tony, we play a lot of golf together, and you know he hasn't been able to play because of the injuries. But, uh, but now it looks like this week he might be back. What, what yeah. would you do if you're Jerry Jones? I personally think I would put him in. Um, it, it's still Romo's team in a way that uh, you know because the offensive line's been there forever. Mm -hmm. uh, I, to me, they're the best. You know, pass blocking, running blocking offensive line. And, in football right now. Right. I really believe that. And I think Romo um, can still get it done if he's healthy. But so you, Dak, I mean, it's a good situation that Dad has. I'm sorry, Jerry Jones has. <laughs> but um, to have two two really great quarterbacks. Dad. Yeah, I call Jerry Dad. Um, How does he take that? He loves it. Yeah. Have you ever played with Jerry? Have you teed it up with him? Yeah, we've played his tournament, the, the Cowboy tournament at uh, his course. And uh, – I've known Steven and Jerry Jr. forever, the whole family. You know, the Arkansas people, we all stick together. Oh, that's right. We're Razorbacks. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I just, I don't know why I didn't put two and two together. So you've known Jerry for... Ever. 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 Yeah. Back back in the Fort Smith, back in the uh, Fayetteville, Fayetteville days. Fayetteville days. Arkansas days. Yeah. Coach Broyles was the one who uh, introduced me to Jerry a long, long time ago. And we just hit it off with, with you know, his sons and everything and... Of course, when he bought the team of the Cowboys, they they all knew I loved the Cowboys. And we're, so you already were a Cowboy fan before you met oh, Jerry way before, Jones. Yeah, way before you owned it. Knee high to a jackrabbit. Oh, yeah. That's when you started rooting for the Live Cowboys. Live and die. Live and die with them. And so now, I mean, I, I don't know. We're, we've been talking about it for quite some time here that you got to stick with the hot hand, right? I mean. Yeah, I mean, it, like I said, it's a good situation to be in. You know, I'm, it, it doesn't really matter what, what mm -hmm. he does. What, right. You know, mm -hmm. I think Tony, if Tony's healthy, he's going to come in and, and score a lot of points. Right. Um, I think Dak's doing it. But you got a running back and offensive line. Ezekiel Elliott is just really running great. He's incredible. Great. He's fast. And, you know, he's one of those runners that uh, I like to see him run it more up the middle than on the outside. Right. I don't like to see running backs run east to west. John, if you had a caddy that you won four tournaments in a row with and the British is coming up and your previous caddy who was sick – is coming back, but you've just won four in a row with this new caddy on your bag. Who's who's on your bag for the British Open? The guy you've won four in a row with, or your longtime bag holder? I I, I would I, you know if you're playing as good as some of those guys are, and like if I ever got in a momentum like that, um, no disrespect to caddies, but it really wouldn't matter. You know, because the player is the one who has to have the confidence. And uh, you know, of course, football is totally different. You're you're paid to do it. Yeah. We have to earn our pay. Um, and it's a it's a tough decision that they have to to make, but it's a positive decision. John Daly here on the Rich Eisen Show. So, uh, what what's Jerry's golf game like? I mean, what's it like? He gets it. He gets it airborne. He does. That's all that matters. <laughs> so, would you say yeah. he's sociable playing? Is he competitive? What well, are, he's uh, he's competitive. Steven's the one who's competitive at everything. At everything. That's why I love him too. He's Jerry Junior's a little more quiet. He just kind of goes with the flow and. You know, but they're all just wonderful. Did you ever play with Trump? Oh, yeah, I played with Trump a few times. What's his game like? He hits it good. 
Donald, he, uh, he does? Yeah, he really does. He's, he's a decent player. Now, a lot of people say the best stick in his bag is his pencil. Is that a true story? Well, that's Clinton's. Is that Bill? Bill's. Well, you would know that, too, from Arkansas. <laughs> Jesus, Seriously, that's, that's so, Mr. Mulligan right there. Well, what do you mean by that? <laughs> He'll throw a ball down before he hits the first one. What are you it talking about? Like, really? If he didn't like the shot, he'd just throw another one down and hit it. Did you ever call him on that? Oh, yeah, all the time. What What does he say? Well, you know, I'm just out here practicing. <laughs> um, there's, a, there's a range for that, you know. <laughs> I mean, that's part of the Arkansas cabal, though, right there. Yeah. So, okay, so who would you say, would Bill or, or Donald would be the one that you need to watch more on the golf course? Oh, Bill, of course, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they don't call him Slick Willie. Donald will actually finish a hole. Now, what are you talking and about? And write a score down. Uh-huh. Bill will do what? Bill won't, he won't even, he'll finish, he won't even finish a hole and write a score down. And he'll say what? I, I think four. that was a par. Well, you can't hit seven shots and say it's a par. So, I mean, <laughs> you, know, you just can't do that. <laughs> John Daly is here in the Rich Eisen Show studio. If I take some phone calls from listeners, would you take, would you? Yeah. Okay, he's a man of the yeah. people. 844-204-RICH. If you want to chat with John Daly, we'll talk about your uh, your 30 for 30 when we come back here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show with John Daly back in just one minute's time. <laughs> That's great. Welcome back to the Rich Eisen Show. Hit it hard, a 30 for 30 premiered on ESPN for the life and times of my guest right here on the Rich Eisen Show, John Daly, in studio, 844-204-RICH. There's a lot of folks who want to talk to you, so we'll take some calls and want to hand things off. Always like connecting my listeners and viewers with, with guests like you, John. So what do you think of the 30 for 30 when you saw it? What would you think of it? Well, I mean, the people who are close to me was a tearjerker. I wish it would have showed more about my life other than golf. You know, maybe a little bit more about my kids and uh, just a little bit more about my life. You know, I did a, did a few things off the golf course that weren't good, but I did a lot off that were good. And Go for it. What You got the mic in front of you. Like what? Well, I think more of my family, you know, maybe a little bit more of the charity that I did for Boys and Girls Club and uh, did a lot for Make-A-Wish and when I was living in Memphis. And, uh, you know, it just didn't – to me, it didn't show enough of that. You know, when you look at 30 for 30, it's, it's the good with the bad and – I just felt it was a little bit more too much of the of the drink and the gambling. I mean, you know, everybody knows about that. But uh, it would have been nice to see, you know, they did footage of my children a little bit more. It would have been nice to see Sean and Sierra on there a little bit more. And not when they were babies, but when they're grown. How old are they right now? Sean is 24, Sierra's 21, and Lil John's 13. Is there any moment where you get spit back at you, stuff that you did when you were their age? And you're like, oh, oh all my the God. time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't tell my son not to throw a golf club. <laughs> I say, son, you just care. <laughs> I mean, you know what else can I say? Right. When and, was the last time you threw a golf club? Uh, well, it was probably at the PGA. Not this year, but last year. Threw it right in the Lake Michigan. Mm -hmm. a little ten-year-old kid got off the side of the boat. It was a six iron. Mm -hmm. When I should have thrown the four, because that's the reason I got in the <laughs> got in the water in the first place. I threw I threw away my best club basically in the. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, when you throw a club away yeah. and you've got like 14 holes left, mm -hmm. I think I needed to hit the six iron about six times the rest of that round. So it wasn't the issue of throwing the club at all. It was your club selection. Club selection, yeah. That'll get you. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> John Daly here <laughs> on the Rich Eisen Show. So what, what was, I guess, the toughest of you to see back then from that 30 for 30? What was the toughest moment for you to see back about the times of your... Well, I, I think I look at it how much I've changed, and you know, you know, the '97 with losing m my wife and and things weren't going right. Coming out of Betty Ford or in Betty Ford or whatever, um, Thomas Anderson, and Donnie talking me out of driving the car off the cliff, and I look at how much I am so grateful that my kids are healthy and that I I stayed around to raise them, mm -hmm. and especially little John, I've had custody of him since he was seven and um you know just to see my kids grow and thomas henderson was amazing that night hollywood and henderson hollywood henderson from the yeah. cowboys yeah how'd you get to meet him was it through uh betty through, ford or something like that yeah or? it was actually my first rehab was in 92 at sierra tucson in, in uh tucson arizona mm -hmm. and he came there specifically to meet me and the former cowboy helped me guy who you probably followed when you were a kid oh loved him yeah and had no idea that thomas hollywood henderson was sober and i didn't know he did all that stuff that he did but uh you know he was just 
we became friends. He said, here, read my book. You'll, you'll learn a little bit about me. It's the first book I read since probably college, <laughs> you know, but it, it inspired me. Uh, he inspired me. And, uh, um, you know, he, what he said on the show was, you know, Hollywood, you think ISIS is tough. Hollywood, Hollywood back on crack would, you wouldn't have to worry about ISIS, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but he, he's been a great friend and, uh, you know, he does a lot of speeches and stuff. So, you know, it's cool that an athlete, not that he had to go through what he had to go through, but all the people he's helped, not just other people, but uh, athletes, you know, he, he'd be somebody that, you know, with substance abuse and stuff like that. I mean, NFL should hire him to do speeches and take these young players under his wing because he'd do it. Did you ever meet Manziel? Did you ever meet Johnny? No, I never met Johnny Manziel. Mm -hmm. Has anyone ever asked you to reach out to him in any way, shape, or form? No, because I don't think I'm like the one that, I mean, I've learned an awful lot about, you know, addicts and the stuff that I go through. But, you know, I feel like I can do things in a smaller scale now. I've proved it to myself. And, you know, like even if it's gambling or drinking, I said, whoa, okay, I feel pretty good. Let's stop. All right, here's the keys, you know. Um, I've been very good at that. And, and I don't, you know, if I get a little buzz going, that's why ruin it. I used to ruin all my buzzes. You know, whether I'd pass out or throw up or whatever, do something stupid. But um, I feel like I'm doing everything pretty well in moderation. Um, granted, that's not what somebody in the program, but I'm not in the program anymore. John Daly here on the Rich Eisen Show. Phone lines are lit. Can I take yeah, some calls sure. with you? John Daly going to take some phone calls here on the Rich Eisen Show. Dave in Houston, Texas, you're on with John Daly. What's up, Dave? Hey, John. How you doing? Hey, Rich. Love your show. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate you taking my call. Hey, uh, John, I know you're over at Augusta every uh, April when the Masters comes out in your RV outside the local establishment there. I wanted to find out what's your favorite part of Masters weekend these days. What is it, Dave? Just the fans and seeing all those beautiful Hooters women. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. And selling some product. It's great. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. There you go. John Daly will be honest with you right there. Not too many folks uh, at Augusta talking about those Hooters women, interestingly enough. Oh, they're great. What a great company. They've been so good to me over the over the years and years of going there. We just have a blast. And, you know, they say, well, you know, if you're going to park your bus there and sell your stuff, you know, we pay for the permit. you got to judge the bikini contest. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so your arm gets twisted. Yeah, yeah exactly. Fun. Okay. Uh, Hagen in Stewart, Florida, you are on the Rich Eisen Show with John Daly. What's going on, Hagen? Yes, sir. I'm doing all right, Rich. How you doing? I'm great. You're on with John. Awesome. John, I had a question for you. If, if uh, uh, First of all, you, you inspired me to pick up a golf club from the, from the very beginning, and uh, you're, you're one of the reasons why I play golf to this day. Well, but thank another you. another question is, if you had the chance to play with anybody in the world, who would it be? Thanks, Hagan. Who would it be? Uh, Drew Barrymore, uh, Angelina Jolie, mm -hmm. Halle Berry. That's your... And I'd have to put my fiance in there because she might get a little jealous. <laughs> <laughs> and you'd, do, you'd just drive around in the cart. Oh, I drive them around, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So who 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 have you actually played golf with that would be wow, I didn't I wouldn't imagine John Daly would play golf with this person. Oh, I've played with Kevin James. I got a chance to meet Adam Sandler, play with him. Um you know, Darius Rucker and the and Hooting the Blowfish were my buddies because I felt like I had him come to Memphis one time and mm -hmm. took him down to a course in Kirkwood, beautiful little golf course that just opened and they want to learn how to play golf. And uh I felt like I really helped Dean, Sony, Mark, and Darius, I felt like I almost taught him how to play. I mean, we, we spent hours and hours, and uh, Sony's not, he, I don't think he doesn't hate golf, but he doesn't play a lot. But Mark, Mark and Darius, and Mark Bryan is the lead guitar, Dean's the bass player, and Sony's the drummer. And we all know Darius Rucker, but sure. they just love golf. And, and their Monday uh, after the Masters tournament is bar none, one of the funnest tournaments. They raise so much money for junior golf and charities in that local area. And, and I feel like I'm a part of that because I helped him learn how to play golf. Who's the best non-pro John Daly you've ever played with? Non-pro John non -pro. Daly? Non-pro. No, no. John, I've just repeated your name to make sure that people know who is listening. Um, so you, John Daly, who's the best non-pro you have played with? There's been a lot. I mean, Tony Romo impressed me. I mean, with golf, he can hit it a mile. Um, Roethlisberger's good. Uh, the hockey players are the ones you got to worry about because those guys can – Sneak up and play some pretty good golf. Wayne Gretzky's a decent golfer, mm -hmm. um, but list goes on. They're, they're just athletes, and uh, you know, your, your pitchers, your quarterbacks, mm -hmm. um, your hockey players are, are the ones who can really 
propel in the game of golf. But no celebrities, quick. no 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 singers, no actors. Oh yeah, or, tons of them. Yeah. Is any any Johnny Lee, Willie Nelson. I mean, it, it Willie just, Nelson. Yeah, you know, the funny that Willie owns a golf course, and people ask him, "Hey Willie, what do you shoot in your course?" He goes, "Anything I want." <laughs> <laughs> well, I think of, when I think of Willie Nelson, I think of you know Carl Spackler or Bill Murray from uh, from Caddyshack. <laughs> Some yeah. of that blue. You know, but there's a ton of them, and you know the game of this, golf has given me that chance to meet all these great people and play golf with them and all that good stuff. Let's take a break. Uh, we'll come back. We'll have a little bit more of a conversation with John Daly. Kyle Schwarber of the world champion Chicago Cubs will be phoning in in hour number three. Rob Lowe will be coming by in person in hour number three as well. John Daly here on the Rich Eisen Show. The phone lines are lit. This is a lot of fun. John, stop by. So should you. Don't go anywhere. Back with more on the Rich Eisen Show shortly. Two NFL rivals come together for a six-part documentary series from executive producers Tom Brady, Michael Straham, and Gotham Chopra, Deepak's son, who was on our show at the Super Bowl. It's now time, finally, for it to debut on Audience. Take a weekly global journey celebrating the transcendent power of sports. It premieres on Tuesday, November 15th at 8 p.m. Eastern and Pacific. Religion of Sports, an AT&T original series exclusively available on Audience Channel 239. How about Tom Brady, John Daly? You met him? I have. TB12? He's a good golfer, too. He's a good too, golfer, yeah. Right? Belichick's a good golfer. Now, hold on a second. Really? Yeah, I mean, Coach won the Hartford Pro-Am, well, it's been about seven, eight, nine years ago. But he, At the TPC in Cromwell, Connecticut? Yeah, we I won. I played in that one once he upon was, a time. Uh, he played great. Yeah, we won that Pro-Am by a landslide So be because the, of him. Because of Belichick. Yeah. So it was you and Belichick and who else together? Uh, a couple other, a couple, just, just a couple other amateurs, just a, yeah. Just a it paid to Other play. Other dudes yeah. paid to play. We had a blast with Belichick. Yeah, and you. What'd you talk about? A little football, a little golf. That's it. Certain things I wouldn't put on air, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Now you wanted. You were talking about what we were talking about before we introed you. Browns versus Alabama. That's not even. That's not a game. You think that's a game? I think the first half would be a game. Come on, I really do. I, now I think the Browns will end up beating them, but. I think it'd be a very close game the first half. Cody Kessler, by the way, is playing very well for them from USC. He's doing well enough. I mean, Terrell Pryor is a grown yeah. man. Uh, I know that there's a lot of young kids on that team. But you think Alabama would hang with the Browns for a half? For a half, I think they would. And then the second half? It'd be, I think it, the Browns would wear them down too quick, too big, too strong. But okay. That really? just shows you how much respect I have for Alabama because apparently Arkansas can't seem to beat them. I want to take a call but before we let you go. Chris in Shreveport, Louisiana. You're on with John Daly here on the Rich Eisen Show. Chris, you there? Hey, how you doing, Rich? You're on with John Daly, Chris. How you doing, Rich? You doing all right? I'm great. You're on with John <laughs> Daly, Chris. Hey, John, uh, me and some of my boys uh, made a trip, well, let's see, probably eight years ago up to uh, Dardanelle uh, for, the, uh, for the Boys and Girls Club. Oh, yeah. Uh, tournament. With, uh, that one year we partied in your backyard. That's right. Uh oh. Oh yeah. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, that was. Uh, <laughs> I forget who was playing that night. I think you got up on stage, and then um, the Sydney Bowl. Then Darius Rucker the following year. There you go. So now, did you that sing? Was out at, uh, that was out at the golf course. Thanks for calling in, Chris. So, was that where you performed "Hit It Hard"? Is that where you performed? No. The interesting thing, I came out with that album. I only know one way. It's the song me and Darius Rucker do. Mm-hmm. Um, it came out in 2010. Yes. Me and Matt Nolan. Matt Nolan was, uh, and David Malloy, my producer of the album. Uh, we're just sitting outside having a few drinks while Mickey was mastering, I think, Lost Soul. And uh, he did this lick, and it was like, -da 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 -da. and I go, oh my God, we got to write a song right now. He goes, let's do it. Mm -hmm. And we finished that song in like 10 minutes, recorded it, and it became the, the song on the album that's, you know, people are actually buying. And now with the thirty for thirty out, yeah, it's back on the charts. It went back on iTunes. It was it went to ninety one, I think, on iTunes after the show the first night. Well, wait, wait till you get the Rich Eisen show bump. Oh, I can't wait. I love it. You have no yeah. idea what's a about bump. to come. Got to play hit it hard. This is serious bump here. <laughs> do you do you have that Mike Del Tufo? To, you, I'm sure you're gonna you're gonna tee that one up here to use that phrase. Um, so before I let you go, what what's next for you, John Daly? A little what, time off. Um, hang with my guys at Red Hill and. Out there in Rancho Cucamonga, Upland, Ontario. And okay. 
play a little golf and uh, wait for my bus to get done and then go see my daughters in Arkansas and then get my son out of school for Thanksgiving. And and then off you go. Yeah, we, me and my son play the P&Z uh, Champions Tour event. Mm -hmm. I think December 9th, 10th, and 11th, and he's, he's ready. He's so waiting for it. Who's in Super Bowl 51? John Daly, give me your prediction. We're at the halfway point of the National oh. Football League season right now. What do you got? I got Cowboys going. AFC's tough. I mean, I still think New England. It may be a New England Cowboy. I, that would, if it's New England versus the Raiders in the AFC Championship game, and then Cowboys, let's just throw Seattle in that mix. That would that would break that would break social media. I think if the Cowboys play the Patriots in the Super Bowl. In Houston, by the way. Oh, yeah. Which would be more of Cowboys. Well, I don't know. It's, the Houston Texans don't like the Cowboys too much. But I think the true Cowboy, yeah, it, we'd fill it up. Uh, I Cowboy think so. Cowboys fans would just go nuts. What's the, what are the results of the poll question? Give John Daly the question before we go out the door with Kyle Schwarber and Rob Lowe in hour number three. Who's Chris the Brockman. best seven-win team in the NFL, John? Patriots, Raiders, or Cowboys? What do you think? Now, be honest here. I mean... You got to go with the Patriots, but my Cowboys are second close. Okay, what do you got for me on the on the current? Yeah, forty nine percent agree with John. Say New England, twenty six percent. We got a tie for the Raiders and the Cowboys. Well, look, John, um, I got to be honest with you. Love having you here. Come on back. I can't guarantee you a haircut every time, but <laughs> um, I guarantee you a good time every time you do come. Oh, I've enjoyed it. I mean, the phone line's lit. You have a lot of fans everywhere, and what you've done with your life. I'm glad that you're here. Thank you. you Appreciate are, it, Rich. No, you bet. You bet. That's John Daly right here. Is that what it is? Here it is. I only know yeah, that's me and there's a song. Yeah. Nah, I just, this makes me want to just pop one open and sway. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is that wrong to say that in front of a lot, Mike? <laughs> John Daly here on the Rich Eisen Show. Coming up, Kyle Schwarber of the Chicago Cubs and Rob Lowe in studio. And you for Hour 3. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.